webinar for December. This is Lance Young, and uh, we're glad you joined us. Today's uh, topic is going to be on performance planning and management. We're going to start off uh, with Sean Owens talking about some payroll tips for December, and then uh, we'll do a few safety items as well, and then have the, the uh, topic. So, Sean, go ahead and get started. Thanks, Lance. Uh, welcome, everybody. We appreciate you guys being with us again today. And um, today I'm going to take a minute to talk about something that is near and dear to everybody's hearts this time of year. That That is uh, your tax filing and W-499, um, specifically what to do if you, if you plan to revise your W-4 and how to go about that with your employer. Um, there's a few points here that I want to cover. But before I get going, I'd just like to remind everybody as we approach uh, the end of the year, um, when, you, when you start looking at your taxes for the new year, it's a good idea uh, with whoever your tax preparer is, your, your CPA, any accountant or tax professional, as you get through the, uh, the end of one calendar year, meet with that person to uh, look at your taxes and Sometimes it's good to have them do a salary analysis on your income and, and help you figure your taxes for the following year. Um, first, I'm going to take a minute here just to talk about Form I-9 and uh, why it's important to not just fill that out for new employees, but also to look at that as an employer. Um, the Form I-9 is the form each employee must have on file to show eligibility uh, to work in the United States. Every employer should have a Form I-9 on file for each employee. And uh, this time of year is a, a good time to, to have your employees notify you of any changes to their identification, uh, whether that be they got married or they maybe, maybe had a name change for any other reason. Um, it's a good idea to update those I-9s and uh, even, even as far, go as far as doing an audit on your I-9s to make sure the information that you have matches what, what the employees show. Uh, moving on here to speak a little bit about Form W-4. This is the form used by employees uh, that your employer can help you provide uh, to know how much income tax should be withheld from the employee's wages. This is a pretty standard form. Everyone has to have one filled out as a new employee. Uh, what you may not know is that, that you can revise this form at any time. Um, the, the Form W-4, and this is what I was touching on to start off, this is a good idea this time of year if you need to make any changes to your taxes or if you need to, uh, to uh, review your taxes what you have filed, this is a good time of the year to do that. Um, a couple quick tips on the W-4 for employers. Make sure that your employee, uh, employee gives you a completed W-4. If you aren't given one um, and you aren't given one in, in a significant amount of time before the payroll period begins, uh, then, then what will happen is the employer will have to withhold taxes as if the employee is single with no allowances, which means the maximum amount of taxes will be withheld from your wages. Uh, again, just touching on the employee may revise their W-4 at any time, but make sure if you do a revision on your W-4 that you deliver that to your manager, supervisor, whoever's in charge of your payroll before the start of your next pay period. Because if you don't, they aren't liable to have to change that until the start of the next one following that current pay period. So make sure you get it to them in plenty of time. Uh, just another tip, it's not your employer's responsibility to advise you on your tax filing. As a matter of fact, some employers can get in a lot of hot water over this. It's best to consult a CPA or tax professional. Uh, it's not good to counsel even fellow employees um, to, to get counseling, manager, supervisor, what, what taxes work for one person may or may not work for you. So, so consult your tax professional on that. Uh, it, you'll save you a lot of time and probably even money. Um, finally, your W-2s, usually most employers start sending them out in January, so you can expect to have them in plenty of time to file your taxes. Thank you very much, and we really appreciate it. Thanks, Sean. Uh, obviously, at Partners, uh, 
if you're not a client, we'd love for you to be one, and we can handle all those items that Sean talked about for you or advise you on them on the I-9, the W-4s, and we uh, do process the W-2s. Uh, Ron Wofford is going to speak for a minute on uh, uh, shelters in place, I believe, and uh, so we'll let him talk now. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Uh, we're going to talk today about shelter in place as a result of the uh, most recent incident in California. We need to know how and we need to know where in, in case of an event of terrorism or national disaster, uh, how to shelter in place. If instructed by the United States Department of Emergency Management to shelter in place, you need to know. If you're at home, close and lock all the windows and doors. Go to the innermost uh, room of your house with no windows and no exterior doors in your home. Uh, make sure that you have a radio or TV available for as long as they last. And another type of communication device such as phones, uh, hardware phones or cell phones. Uh, a lot of times the cell phones get overwhelmed in disasters as we know here in Oklahoma during tornado season. Uh, however, you can usually get a text message through. Uh, make sure that you uh, have somebody outside of your general uh, vicinity that you can contact uh, or make contact with that you and your family can communicate with uh, to get them the message that you're okay or that you've been affected and where you are, where you're going. Uh, remember in disasters, uh, be ready and uh, able to re relay messages for you uh, about the situation. If you're at work whenever a disaster happens, close and lock the exterior doors. Account for all of your employees. Get in an interior room with no windows or exterior doors. Have someone in charge of uh, grabbing some bottled waters in case you're there for an extended period of time. Have a communication device uh, to get news reports and a cell phone. If you're in your car, go to the nearest public building or designated shelter. Close the windows and the vents on your vehicle. Um, I always carry a roll of duct tape in my personal vehicles uh, just for uh,
we'll get uh, right back to the presentation. Uh, we were talking about this time of year and the importance of ramping up performance goals, uh, performance reviews, as well as establishing those performance goals for 2016. A lot of us are busy about that right now uh, as we uh, are about to start a, a new year. I think the uh, other item that we want to uh, discuss is your role as managers, as leaders in developing, mentoring, setting goals, and helping create an an atmosphere where these employees of yours can be successful. So we'll cover all that in the next 30 or, or 40 minutes. Again, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to type those into the chat box on the right side of your screen, and uh, we'll sure get to those. Let's talk about the difference between performance appraisals and performance management. And again, it's, it's, it's a bit of a different function and a, di a different perspective. When you think about an appraisal, you're, you're looking usually at an event, a formal uh, session that you have, which is usually an on uh, a one-time event versus performance management, which is ongoing. And the way that we um, kind of think about that these days is, is providing feedback or providing coaching. That's the ongoing piece of performance management. And, and we'll talk more about coaching and feedback a little later in the presentation. Uh, again, it's uh, on the appraisal side, it's retrospective. In other words, you're kind of looking back. You're kind of looking backwards as to what's happened versus prospective as to what's happening now and what's about to come when you're managing and coaching. On the appraisal side, uh, it's short term. It's, you're looking at a short uh, period of time that you're usually reviewing versus managing is for the long term. And then the appraisal too is around corrective uh, correction. It's a bit correction oriented in that you correct people rather than in management, you talk about steps and progress and how to improve. And then finally, the appraisal, you know, there's usually some type of form uh, that's uh, completed, some evaluation, some review form that's done during the appraisal versus the uh, Management is, is goal setting, it's ongoing, and it's a, more of a, a plan uh, to, uh, to match the culture of the organization. And again, here are kind of the components in a continuum of performance management as we want to begin to focus on managing performance. In the center, you see the, the goal of performance management with the different components of the review that we've talked about, performance planning, we'll talk more about that, as well as goal setting. And, and planning. So let's talk about each of these components a little bit more. First, that review process. It does take some advanced planning. A lot of organizations will ask the employee to do a self-appraisal before they actually sit down with their manager. They'll complete that self-appraisal form uh, uh, themselves uh, on their performance, on their productivity through the year, and how well they did up against their established goals, how well they did in, in their task, in their functions, in their personal development, professional development. And then they'll submit that to their manager, and this will give their manager an opportunity up front to, to, to view their perspective on how they've done. It's, it's a good tool that a lot of organizations use. And, and the best type of review and the, the environment is to create an open dialogue. Again, this is an opportunity to, to review the past, consider some lessons learned, uh, talk about the progress that one's made and their skill set in their, in their professional uh, development, and then also establish goals and objectives for the next period. We'll, we'll dive deeper into establishing goals uh, here, here in a few slides. It's also a time to, to lay out plans for uh, uh, specifics around performance, around uh, examples of performance. You want to bring up uh, situations where individuals have been successful, uh, uh, praise them for that, reward them for that as appropriate with the, the policies and procedures of your organization. And then also, you know, give, give people an opportunity to, uh, to chime in. Give them an opportunity uh, to participate in this. Again, this is an open process, an open dialogue, so schedule significant uh, sufficient time in order for others to do that. Um, be prepared. You, uh, uh, a full range of issues may come up, as this may be an opportunity for them to bring up some items that maybe you weren't expecting. If uh, you do get that self-appraisal form out in front of them, it may give you an opportunity to understand what their concerns are, that you'd be more prepared, again, to address those, to, uh, those concerns. Uh, you know, 
let's not be critical of someone. Let's don't try and justify management of factions. This will uh, give the view, the perspective that we're being defensive. Uh, so, and uh, I think it goes without saying that we're going to be confidential about this review process when possible. Uh, we're not going to make promises to employees. We'll, we'll, we'll make commitments that we'll check on things and get back with them, but to make commitments regarding any type of promotion, any type of transfer, any type of pay raise is probably not the, uh, the best practice. And then eliminate distractions. Um, we've all been in, in situations, we've all been in meetings where uh, the leader, maybe even your manager, your boss has been called out or taken a phone call or is working emails and, and what, what uh, that causes is, is a degree of disrespect for the others in the room. And so eliminate those disruptions, whether it's texting or emails or phones or whatever it may be, uh, so that, again, you show the employee that you're having uh, this review with uh, the, the respect that they're due. It, it doesn't cause any issues around that. Let's talk uh, a bit about uh, some difficult evaluations. From time to time, we are all uh, faced with a critical, maybe crucial conversation that we need to have regarding someone's uh, performance. A lot of times it's unsatisfactory performance. In other words, at other times it's inappropriate uh, behavior. We need to be very specific about what we're talking about, talk in, in terms of the incidents, uh, what's expected, the impact that maybe that's had on other employees, on customers, on your department, even the, the employee's team. And then always solicit uh, uh, constructive uh, feedback from the employee and how they might uh, correct this. In other words, what's their action plan? Involve them in this and that to correct those type of uh, performance or behavioral issues. And then always uh, have a clear understanding of how this is going to be measured, monitored moving forward. As we form this action plan, there may be some milestones out there, some dates that we want to review progress and establish those before uh, that session is is over. I'm going to shift now to the the uh, ongoing uh, performance management, which will will classify this as the performance communication. And again, if you have any uh, questions, you're free to uh, type those into the chat box. But we want to we want to have a have a mindset as as leaders as management that our role of, of performance management is continuous. It's a continuing process. We're always trying to grow, enhance, and develop our employees. This is just not a, a one-time event where we would, would send them to a conference or send them to a seminar in order to learn something. But uh, it, it's part of our role as leaders and managers of the organization to, to enhance their, their development, enhance their, their, their productivity. And the way, again, that we do that is through feedback, is through ongoing coaching. So it's an ongoing process is the key around this. At times, it's, it's appropriate to establish some milestones, some dates, again, that we have some objectives that are out there. So put those uh, in writing. Uh, you call those some type of progress reports. You can, again, use whatever term fits into your environment, into your culture. You know, be aware that at times we do need to encourage them, and at times even it goes to taking corrective action if those goals are not met. At times we need to monitor, uh, maintain the, the open communication because goals may change during the year. We may shift targets. We may move one goal from one quarter to the next depending on business necessity or what's happening with our customer base. So, so, so be flexible with those goals. Don't be so locked in on them that uh, we can't alter them at all because uh, at times we do need to, to make adjustments just due to the business or due to the uh, the employee's uh, performance. Uh, finally, again, uh, our job as leaders and managers most of the time is to coach, is to assist, is to, is to uh, provide that feedback. Again, particularly when they're failing to meet standards, uh, most time employees are looking for some advice on a way to, to, uh, to meet those requirements, to meet the standards, to meet their objectives. So it's our role to assist them in doing that. Obviously, they're going to have to execute on that we can coach and provide them advice and feedback along the way. And when we talk about goal setting, uh, there's, a, there's a, a good acronym that will, will uh, 
focus on here in just a minute. But it's good to define and establish those specific goals uh, up front, even before the review period, so that uh, individuals can be pointed in the right direction. They can head down, you know, the, the right path. Uh, these are good to be done in kind of a, a mutual agreement in that this is a discussion point rather than a, a specific order or directive, but let's talk through this. Let's, let, let's talk about a timeline that makes sense. Um, and again, if we need to redirect or modify those goals, objectives, let's do those in a timely manner. Just don't wait till after the due date, after the target date, but let's monitor that along the way. And when you're establishing a goal or an objective for the next uh, review period, uh, appraisal period, uh, think about using the SMART acronym. It's, a, it's around goal criteria, and it's easy to remember the S is uh, for specific. Our goals want to be very specific. Uh, we don't want to leave uh, a lot of gray area in those. We need to know exactly what the target is, what the objective is. Also, we need, they need to be measured. We need to know when, when we cross the goal line. We need to understand where we are along the path. So have measurements in place for those specific goals. We, they need to be achievable. One of the most discouraging things to employees is to have a goal set out there that is really unattainable. That becomes a demotivator. So ensure they're achievable as well as rel relevant. And when we talk about relevance, we're talking about relevance to the business plan, relevance to the business uh, objectives, as well as the mission statement and organization. If it doesn't make sense and is not in alignment with our business plan, then we really need to question why we're doing it. Why are we spending effort and time and energy towards this objective when it's not adding anything to the business plan, the, the top line, or even the bottom line. And then we need to understand the timeline. They need to be time bound. So you've got those five criteria in each goal. And again, those are those SMART goals of being specific, having something that is a, a target that is measurable, uh, achievable, relevant, as well as have a timeline. So you could use those in any goals that uh, You'd, you'd want. Again, we talked about it aligning with the organization's business plan, the business goal, and, and it's good to explain that to employees, why this goal is important, why this objective is important, why we need to, to accomplish this as an organization, as an individual, and explain to them why, again, it fits with the business plan so they can see the overall picture. And it's also good to recommend and even recognize those behaviors that align with our business plan. There are certain uh, cultural behaviors and core competencies that we practice in each of our businesses. For example, it may be around integrity. There may be something around uh, customer service. They're important to your business. So remind them of how important those behaviors are in accomplishing their objectives, in accomplishing their goals. In fact, there's even a level of expectation that a leader or a manager would have in how one goes about accomplishing that goal. It's not just accomplishing the goal or the objective, it's how we did it. And that needs to be in, in line with your core companies and the values that you have in your business. And again, there's always a good practice, it's always a good practice to establish checkpoints, milestones along the way, formal review dates, whether you do that on a monthly or whether you do that on a quarterly basis. Um, one of the, the best practices out in the marketplace is, is once we uh, uh, go through those goals is establishing some rating criteria. Individuals want to know where they stand. They want to know how well they did. We're all curious about that. So giving them a rating helps them understand the success they've had or the development opportunities that, that they're in front of them. So these are just some examples. Again, whatever works the best for you and your business. Some organizations use words. Some use numbers, a rating system of one to five, for example. I just got some examples on the rating criteria here. Uh, the first, first two categories would be excellent or good. Of course, excellent is consistently exceeds those performance standards, would be consistently you know, contributing to the success of the organization by adding value. One that consistently uh, exceeds their performance goals would be some of the criteria under excellence. Good would, would, would be uh, meeting those performance standards, uh, completing uh, 
uh, aspects of the job to meet the goals, and also the capabilities to adjust in a changing work uh, environment. We all have, uh, again, shifting priorities from time to time. Uh, we need to have a workforce that understands that flexibility is important, and we need to communicate that to them. That's something that we can, is part of our continuing communication process, to so talk about the flexibility that we have to be responsive to the marketplace, to be responsive to changes in our industry, to be responsive to our customer base, is, is, is a value that most businesses put near the top of their list. And again, that's something that we just want to, our employees to be aware of, and the only way that they're aware of that is if we, as leaders, communicate that to them and continually communicate that to them. The final two rating categories on your screen that I have now are around acceptable. This would be, uh, they generally meet the expectations of that position. They uh, do perform the job. They, they meet their goals. Uh, there may be some areas of improvement that they need to focus on, maybe an area of weakness, and we'd want to put in some type of performance improvement plan. And the final category is unsatisfactory. This is one that's that well, one is failing or being unsuccessful in their role. And they need to understand that this is below expectations, that this is this is not acceptable performance, it's not acceptable productivity, and that it will require a, some performance improvement. Uh, again, best practices in the marketplace, and what more, most organizations do is they address this via a performance improvement plan. They use that uh, through uh, progressive review dates with targets and goals for this individual uh, to get back to a, a level of acceptable or even good performance in, in their role and with their task and with their with their job requirements. So if you have questions on, on how to go about these performance improvement plans, you're welcome to contact me or anyone for that matter within the uh, Partners HR organization. Uh, we have resources that can help you with that, that can talk you through and give you options around what might work best in your organization. Some of the concerns and issues that come up with, uh, and as, I, as the slide says, perils with the rating process, is sometimes we have some biases. We have biases that are naturally a part of us. For example, there's the uh, horn halo effect. In other words, we rate employees on, on the same on every trait. In other words, we kind of got a grudge or we're not seeing clearly the different uh, values that individual brings because we have a negative attitude about it or maybe an inflated attitude about someone. There's one or uh, another peril that you need to be cautious of around central tendencies. In other words, we, we just, there's not any difference in the way that we rate people. We rate everybody good, we rate everybody acceptable, and, and that's really not the case, but we just kind of fall to the center. There's also a, a peril out there about uh, leniency. In other words, we're not honest with our ratings because many people aren't good with conflict. And so instead of having that crucial conversation uh, about one's performance and providing the, the required feedback for them to be successful, we just avoid it. Um, the other concern or peril that's out there in rating is around what they call recency. In other words, you think about what's just happened in the last couple of weeks around that individual performance, whether it's positive or whether it's negative, and not consider the entire review period. And then there's one uh, around uh, uh, similarity or like me. In other words, we tend to surround ourselves with, with folks that are kind of like us. In other words, similar values, similar interests, and it, it, it causes us to, to, to rate those individuals higher than others because we tend to like them uh, more than maybe the rest of the team. So just uh, some suggestions in, a, in avoiding these uh, rating perils is a lot of times one's uh, compensation or even bonuses are based on their performance, which comes back to how we as leaders and managers rate them. So it's important that we do uh, rating in a proper and consistent manner in a, in a fair and equitable way. So a, a way to avoid some of these rating perils is, is make objective statements, consider the, the total period of the employee's performance, not just what happened recently, not just what one area of their performance, but look at that in totality, if you will. Keep, uh, keep good records. 
keep examples of, of their progress or their failures so that you can, you can communicate those and, and be clear about what the expectations are. Be specific. We talked about that earlier. Be specific around performance issues as well as behavioral issues. What are the expectations? How can you coach them to be, to be more customer focused, for example? Keep those communication sh uh, channels open. And then we always need to, to be cognizant and clear on the legal side that we don't want to uh, step over the discrimination line in the areas of in, in our ratings that we're not uh, giving one group a uh, favor or being discriminatory around any other groups, these protected groups, these protected classes by law, and we know those are around age and race and sex, religious affiliation, national origin, as well as veteran status or dis, uh, disability. So those groups particularly have, are considered protected classes under the law, and if we were, for example, would have some exposure or risk, if we happen to grade one or more of those groups consistently lower than we did other groups. So those are just some items to be thinking about and be concerned about uh, as, as we have these ratings. Again, I would encourage you in, in to establish that performance-based culture to, to drive your business and the productivity of individuals to be successful is to set some performance goals. Set performance goals, and again, this is a good time to do that for 16. It also may be wise in your organization to consider some development goals. Um, something that, some item, some task, some skill that will improve that in person's performance. It may be that you need to, to send them to a course or you need to do some uh, e-learning uh, through their computer or you may want, to, it may be as simple as uh, coaching them or working through a book study together. There's a lot of different ideas as, as far as professional development. But investing in your employees is only going to come back in a return for your business as they can be more productive, have higher performance, is, is directly going to be benefit your business. I'll, uh, I'll pause for a minute to see if we have any uh, questions at this time. Again, you're welcome to type your questions into the, the chat box, if you will. This uh, recording, too, will be available on the website. And if, again, if you have questions uh, for me or if you'd like a copy of this presentation, you see my uh, contact information, Kay Killingsworth at partners-hr.com. Uh, you're welcome to drop me a note, and we'll sure uh, uh, get this uh, turned around to you in short order. So I'll leave uh, the remainder of the glance to close yeah. us up. Yeah, thanks, Kyle. Uh, uh, great topic, great time of year to, to review all that and, and uh, bring it up. Also, uh, it, uh, you have somebody in your office or that someone else uh, associate that you want to hear this presentation. We'll be doing it tomorrow on Thursday at 3 o'clock. Uh, but again, as Kyle mentioned, it'll be out on the website in a few days if someone wants to do that. So thanks for joining us, and we're, uh, we'll be done for the day. Thank you.